Hello, Mount Sinai. I'm back. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, once again we come asking that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive you afresh. Father, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are continuing on uh, our articles of faith, the perseverance of saints. Our author writes, we believe that such only are real believers as endure unto the end, that their persevering attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors, that a special providence watches over their welfare, and that they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. And our main scripture continues to be John the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. <clears throat> then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Our focus continued to be on the latter part of verse 32, and the truth will set you free. We've been looking at truth that will set us free. One such truth is our second declaration of freedom, which is we have freedom from defeat and no obligation to the flesh. That is found in Romans the 8th chapter, verses 5 through 17. And today, I'll read all of the verses. Starting with verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful man, mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature, to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you, are, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his, in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. And so we continue to look at defeat as a mindset. We said that if my mind tells me that I'm defeated, then I'm defeated. But if I change the message that I'm sending to my mind, then my outlook will change. And so we've been looking at the disciples, Peter in particular, how his mindset went from being on top of the world while he was walking with Jesus to that of being defeated when Jesus was crucified. Since we all have experienced losing a loved one and we all have experienced grief, we don't have to reach far to allow our minds to feel how Peter felt that day and the day after Jesus was crucified. Then, by the same token, we have never experienced having our loved ones be resurrected. When we have gone to the wake and viewed the body, gone to the funeral, and gone to the graveyard, and ate the chicken at the repast, that's it. 
we're, we're left with the task, uh, hard as it may be, of living without that person. That is all of our experiences when death invades our life. So once again, we can allow our minds to go there with Peter and the disciples on that Sunday morning. When the women came to say that Jesus had risen from the dead, people don't get up from the dead. And we like that about death. You like, you like me have probably been to at least one funeral in your lifetime where family members have carried on in such a way, some even acting as though they would even get into the casket. Even then, they really did not want the person to get up. So, so we get it that when the women came to, the, to tell the disciples that Jesus was alive, they didn't believe it. But then over a course of 40 days, Jesus appeared to them and, and to others, proving that he was indeed alive. Luke, the author of the book of Acts, wrote in chapter 1, verse 3, he says, After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Last time we left off, it was day 40, and time for Jesus to return to his heavenly father. Luke 24, starting with verse 50 reads, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. What a change from the men we've been studying for the last several months. Remember when we looked at the scene in the garden the night Jesus was arrested and how Peter followed him from a distance? To, to Peter, in his mind, it looked like defeat. But... We pointed out that defeat is not defeat when God is calling the shots. God's playbook has some strange plays that if you look at it with the human eye, it has defeat written all over it. But to God, it's victory. When Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scripture, they became new creatures. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed, has gone, and the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting men's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. These are not the same men that were hiding in the upper room, afraid that they might be killed. They were celebrating victory over, over their enemy. Their enemy was death because they were afraid that they would be killed too. But they are now celebrating. They're having a victory over their enemy who has been defeated. Their fear of death was no more. Jesus, de Jesus had defeated death and promised to be with them. Jesus said in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 18 through 20, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Think about it. When you see a dead man 
come back to life. And, and then you see him taken up to heaven. He, he, he's given all authority in heaven and in earth. And he promises to be with you always, even to the end of the age. All authority in heaven and in earth means that he is sovereign. And then to seal the deal, he tells you to wait for the promised Holy Spirit who will dwell in you to empower you to be a witness of these things. It's time to drop the mic. It's finished. Uh, Jesus closed his time on earth with the disciples with the promise required to make all his teachings effective. His presence in the form of the Holy Spirit. Think about it. The one thing that we fear most is death. Most of us fear death. When that is settled in our mind, fear is gone. Who can harm you when you don't fear death anymore? What can harm you when you don't fear death anymore? So after Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples no longer had to hide, had a need to hide behind locked doors. They no longer feared what the religious leaders would do to them because of the gospel. So they didn't go back into hiding no longer wearing the hoodies so that they wouldn't be noticed. The Bible says that they worshiped him and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They're not hiding. They're not trying, they're, they're, they're not, trying not to be seen. In my mind, they're beaming. Great joy attracts attention. And, and then the Bible says, that they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Praising and blessing God about what they had seen and heard. The gospel. The gospel is good news. It is not just Jesus died for my sins. It's so much more than that. It's good news that should cause us to worship. Cause us to praise and bless God. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4, the apostle says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture. So the gospel, which means good news, consists of three core events, Jesus' death for our sins, his burial, and his resurrection. Christ's death removed our sin and guilt. It was taken from us and placed on him. Christ's death removed God's wrath. By dying in our place for our sin, Christ removed the wrath of God that we justly deserve. Christ's death provided us with redemption. He, it released us from the bondage and curse of sin. Christ's death reconciled us to God. Christ's death defeated the power of sin. Christ's death, Christ took our place as our substitute. He was pierced for our transgression. He was wounded for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2 and 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Being the righteousness in Christ, we are now able to, to have the Holy Spirit abide in our, spirit, in our spirit, that we may have a more direct communication with God. It is through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that we receive new life. If the only thing that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross was forgiveness for our sin, 
and nothing else, then we would still be hopelessly stuck in slavery to our sin. Jesus would have taken the punishment we deserve, but our hearts and our lives would have remained the same. That wouldn't be good news. The good news is, through the resurrection, we receive new life. We are no longer bound to, to, to and slaves to our sins. We have been given a new heart. With that new heart comes new desires. Old things are passed away. We are new. Jesus' resurrection provides us with a secure future hope. Sin and death enter the world through one man's failure. In the same way, life is brought through one man's righteousness. Adam's sin brought death. Jesus' righteousness brings resurrection from the dead. Just as death was not the end for Jesus, it's not the end for us. Not only did Jesus die, was buried, and resurrected, but he also ascended to heaven. His ascension is an assurance that God is that God is alive and that he does exist. The fact that Christ was raised from the dead and carried to heaven proves that God is. Only God could do such a thing. The ascension assures that Christ is God's son. The fact that God raised him up and received him up into heaven proves his sonship. The ascension assures that heaven is real because he ascended up to heaven. The ascension assures that the Great Commission is the call and mission of the believers. Jesus is gone and no longer on the earth. If the gospel is to be carried to the ends of the earth, believers have to do it. The ascension assures that power is available to carry out the Great Commission. And, and finally, the ascension assures that we have a very special helper in heaven, one who really loves and cares for us. Hebrews 4th chapter, starting with verse 14, says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who have been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. After the resurrection, when Jesus opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures, he lifted up his hands and blessed them and then returned to heaven. And this, what used to be a ragtag group of men dealing with defeat, went forth as his representative witnessing for him with great assurance and total victory. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in, in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. See you next time.